I was happy to take part in commission in JIT, and I acted as a tour guide to you new people, to show you where we used to have some historical debates, like the debate we had in 1969, in which I, I participated, and, and Professor Mazrui was there, and Dr. Rodney was there. Even Kanyihamba, I remember Kanyihamba was also there. And we had our big arguments between the, the, the patriots who are led by Dr. Rodney and those who are pro other ideas led by Professor Mazurui. Dr. Chris Kionga is a, an outstanding cadre and leader of the NRM. He's a member of the Central Committee and he has been very active in our efforts ever since 1980, when we were involved in, with UPM. So I congratulate him and I congratulate the university. <clears throat> Universities, including Makerere, are centers of knowledge. The question is, what is knowledge? Knowledge is about what? Part of the problem of Africa has been the confusion on this idea. What is knowledge? On the, on, the, on the side of natural sciences, these universities, like the ones in Africa, have been doing some work. But I want to you to audit. How are you doing it? Can you not improve the teaching of science? Science, which means understanding the laws of nature and, and using them to solve problems. But from the science side of social science, it is again the same challenge. Because this human being, this homo sapien sapien, when he was inventing things, and it would affect the way society is organized. You have seen that when fire was invented, the whole society changed from staying in trees staying in the caves. When, we invent, when our people, ancient people invented agriculture, the whole thing changed. In the hunter gather, gathering at times, the, the, the hunter was very important because he, he, he could, he's the one who was feeding the family. But now, with the crops, the one who could cultivate was more, became very important and who could domesticate uh, animals. So every change in the uh, level of science affects the society. Now, are we conversant with these social ideas? Because these are now social ideas now. Uh, I came here and I spoke to Pro Professor Chirumira. He was the one heading the uh, history uh, department, and I wanted to engage them because I was already very active with the science side. The food technology people, I was with them, Chiam uh, Hangire, Florence Muranga, and all of those, we are always busy. The, the Kira Motors, Musasizi, Tokodri, the, I'm always very busy with those, to deepen the ideas of natural science. How about the social science side? 
because there are a lot of problems there. The, par the paralysis in Africa is because of those, of that side of, of, the, of the social sciences. The correct ideas of how to organize society. So I therefore challenge you and I challenge Dr. Kionga to, to, to audit this. How is that? When we came from the, the, the bush, I, I brought these ideas. And I met Dr. Mujaju. We came, I talked to the Dr. Mujaju, we talked. I thought he had got what I was saying. Introducing political economy as a paper, the paper in all courses. Whatever you study, have a paper to understand the laws that govern the changes in society, which are these, these laws. Yeah. I'm telling you that law number one is that when there's ch change in science and technology, there are concomitant changes in society. It's what I'm telling you now. And this is what I wanted Mujaju to, to follow up. But then Mujaju went and, and made development studies. Before I knew that, that you could get a degree in development studies, it was a whole degree now. Eh? But me, I was talking about a paper in political economy, not, not, not uh, how is the development studies from uh, where do you put economics? Where do you put what? I, I couldn't. Uh -huh. Up to now, I have not had time really to go back for, for that battle. So when I went to our university in Barra, which I had started, because in Barra I, I started it myself, and I wanted it to follow my, our, uh, our NRM ideas, I, I put the focus of medicine, then with Professor Kayanja, we added a faculty of computer science, no, science education, to teach science teachers. Then we added, I think, Bachelor of Nursing and Bachelor of Computer something. Then I had the certain development studies. Ah, please, please. Please, 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 please. I don't know what, I, 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 I protested. I didn't go on the streets, but I don't know whether it is still there in, in, in Barara or what. Uh, so, with these few words, I con con regarding the road unit, that's a very good idea. The road unit for I would definitely support that to, so that you can have your own road unit. You teach your, your engineers how to make roads and how to build, build to do buildings and so on, uh, practically. I totally agree with that. Coming to talk to the students, I will be very happy. Oh, I like talking, if you invite me. who in a very short statement said, we are going to support you with one million US dollars to help you recover the student records. Indeed, the seed sown by the Massacred Foundation has transferred Makerere into one of the most digitalized universities globally. Your actions helped to reduce the sadness that had engulfed our hearts. When Professor Alinete and I came to cabinet to explain the cause of the fire, you guided the cabinet to immediately approve the release of the 21 billion shillings that is, was required to reconstruct the building. The basement of the building will accommodate the Makere University Museum, and we will be honored to host the Ruero War Memorial Museum if we are allowed to do so. Makere University is very much associated with that liberation war, and it is just befitting that we honor those who left the university to fight for freedom. 
As an architect, I can affirm that this building will stand and proclaim to the world, we build for the future, for centuries to come. The ceremony of opening the reconstructed building, which you have just presided over, brings to an end the anxiety among Makerere staff, students, alumni, and the other stakeholders by seeing their icon of higher education in this region once again standing tall, beautiful, and proud. Uh, by extending a vote of thanks for the funds that have been contributed to the reconstruction of the main building, but most importantly and particularly to the reconstruction and renovations that have been taking place in the world of residence. They have finished Lumumba Hall. They are now at Mary Stewart. I know they are coming for Complex Lane Mitchell and other worlds of residences that are in the dilapidated state. They are yet to be renovated. We extend a vote of appreciation for you being in position to recognize that need and release the funds to cater. We extend our heartfelt appreciation to the Ministry of Finance, Planning and Economic Development for implementing Your Excellency's directives and providing the necessary funding for these critical projects. Your Excellency, we have aligned our processes and systems with government policies and expectations to ensure accountable service delivery in higher education. Our immediate focus is, is threefold. One is to ensure the teaching, learning, and research systems. Two is to align our research agenda with the national development plans. And three is to raise value-based students through the Emerging Leaders Program, recently inaugurated by Mama Janet Museven. We recognize the university's critical role as a hub for consistent and intentional transformative conversations. Mr. President, I take this opportunity to thank you and the First Lady, Honorable Janet Museveni, for your decision to deploy me at Makerere in the position of Chancellor. Please join me and we clap for the President. I thank you very much. In the same vein, Mr. President, I convey the appreciation of my immediate family for this deployment. I will, in the coming days, Mr. President, link with the university through the Vice Chancellor to more clearly understand issues at the university and see how to relate with the managers of the university in the context of the central task we face to transform our continent, Africa, Uganda, inclusive. In this regard, my preliminary thinking includes one, deepening the linkage of the wider community of students and staff of Makere University with the central government and the communities of Uganda. Can the research agendas of the university speak more clearly and more directly to the development agenda as spelled out by government? Can the students be more involved in different forms of extension in the Ugandan population and the community. The struggle to develop and transform Africa is a revolutionary duty. It is therefore the duty of all patriots of Uganda and Africa, wherever they may be, to do what they can in support of this effort. Makere University is a prominent and historical central learning and knowledge generating institutions in Africa. Makere University therefore has the duty to keep abreast with the developments in Africa. And those of us who get the opportunity to do some work here have the duty and obligation to keep this assignment and the central focus. I thank you all for your attention. I am happy to join you on this beautiful day when we celebrate a double event, indeed. Thanking God for the successful restoration of the main building, a monumental infrastructure, 
and installing a new university chancellor, Dr. Crispus Tionga. Congratulations, Dr. Tionga, on your esteemed appointment. I also extend the heartfelt congratulations, Professor Ezra Suruma, for your exemplary service as chancellor for the two terms. You served your role with distinction, and we are proud of you. The memory of 20th September, as you have heard from those who spoke before me, 2020, when the iconic ivory tower was engulfed in flames, remains vivid to many of us. Makere's main building is more than just infrastructure. It symbolizes the history and evolution of higher education in Uganda and is a masterpiece of architecture. Today, we celebrate its restoration and the newly ignited hope for the future. The Bible says, a righteous man may fall seven times, but he rises again. That's in Proverbs 24, verse 16. The restoration of main building symbolizes the rising again of Makerere University, I believe. Makerere will once again produce national, continental, and world leaders, men and women, trained and equipped with knowledge and skill, passionate, selfless, and willing to pay the price to see their communities transformed. Africa, they want to see Africa united, economically independent, and developing. It is my prayer that Makere will continue to play a pivotal role in future generations. Your Excellency the President, I am delighted to note that Makere has restored this building to its original exterior glory while making necessary the interior adjustments to meet current needs. The restoration design undertaken by our academicians from the Makere University College of Engineering, Design, Art and Technology is even more fulfilling. This exemplifies how our academic expertise can be practically applied to deliver public goods and services. We hope to see more initiatives where academicians directly support government projects extending beyond the gates of Makere. On behalf of our nation's education sector, I thank you, Your Excellency, for your immediate directive to fund the restoration of this iconic building and other critical projects at Makere, including the students' residences. When the University Council attempted to establish a fundraising committee for the main building, they had reservations about raising the substantial funds needed for such a complex restoration. Your timely intervention, Mr. President, underscores your unwavering support for the higher education sector and Makerere University in particular. The main building is not an isolated area of government investment at this university, as you have heard from the leaders of this university. We were supposed to commission the School of Law building this morning and the refurbished Rumumba Hall, which means they are done, they are ready and uh, waiting for commissioning. Other government-funded projects include the ongoing renovation of Mary Stewart Hall, the construction of the School of Dentistry, the perimeter wall, as you have heard already from the Vice Chancellor uh, before me, and improvements at the University Hospital, including setting up an operating theater and ICU. We have moved beyond the past 
when our partners in development funded all major infrastructure projects at this university and others. With improved economic performance, our government can and will continue to take up these responsibilities incrementally. Yes, but also as the Minister of Education and Sports, I'd be even more proud to know that Makerere and other public universities has some good investment in an endowment fund which gives you more freedom to fulfill your plans and I can't wait for that day when I are here that good news. Ladies and gentlemen, I'm delighted to highlight that, that alongside our investments in infrastructure, the government has also prioritized other critical operational aspects of the university. A key area of focus is research funding, which was previously reliant on our partners. The reliance on donor funding also meant that we had limited control over the research agenda often resulting in studies that did not address our local needs. Establishing the Research and Innovation Fund bridges that gap now and ensures that our research efforts yield outcomes that drive economic growth and social transformation. On this momentous day, I must also commend the government's progressive steps towards resolving staff uh, remuneration issues, including salary harmonization and enhancement. This fiscal year, the government has fully funded salary harmonization across all public universities and remains committed to further salary enhancements as economic conditions 